Urartu, which corresponds to the biblical mountains of Ararat, is the name of a geographical region commonly used as the exonym for the Iron Age kingdom also known by the modern rendition of its endonym, the Kingdom of Van, centered around Lake Van in the historic Armenian highlands present-day eastern Anatolia. The written language that the kingdom's political elite used is referred to as Urartian, which appears in cuneiform inscriptions in Armenia and eastern Turkey. It is unknown what language was spoken by the peoples of Urartu at the time of the existence of the kingdom, but there is linguistic evidence of contact between the Proto-Armenian language and the Urartian language at an early date sometime between the 3rd 2nd millennium BC, occurring prior to the formation of Urartu as a kingdom, the kingdom rose to power in the mid-9th century BC, but went into gradual decline and was eventually conquered by the Iranian Medes in the early 6th century BC. The geopolitical region would re-emerge as Armenia shortly after. Being heirs to the Urartian realm, the earliest identifiable ancestors of the Armenians are the peoples of Urartu. Name and etymology The name Urartu Armenian, Urartu Assyrian, Mat Urartu, Babylonian, Urashtu, Hebrew, Ararat Ararat comes from Assyrian sources. Shalmaneser I recorded a campaign in which he subdued the entire territory of Uruatri. The Shalmaneser text uses the name Urartu to refer to a geographical region, not a kingdom, and names eight lands contained within Urartu, which at the time of the campaign were still disunited. Urartu is cognate with the biblical Ararat, Akkadian Arashtu, and Armenian Ararat. In addition to referring to the famous biblical highlands, Ararat also appears as the name of a kingdom in Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 27, mentioned together with Mini and Ashkenaz. Mount Ararat is located approximately 120 kilometers 75 miles north of its former capital. The name Kingdom of Van Urartian, Bi, Bionili, Vani Tagavoratun is derived from the Urartian toponym Bionili or Bionelli, which was adopted in Old Armenian as Van, Van because of Baetacism in linguistics, when the letters B and V undergo a sound change, hence the names Kingdom of Van or Vanic Kingdom. Other Urartian toponyms and words went through the same sound change as the Armenian language spread throughout the region and absorbed them see Arabuni and Arabin. In the 6th century BC, with the emergence of Armenia in the region, the name of the region was simultaneously referred to as variations of Armenia and Urartu. In the trilingual Behistun inscription, carved in 521 or 520 BC by the order of Darius I, the country referred to as Urartu in Akkadian is called Armenia in Old Persian and Harmanuya in the Elamite language. The mentions of Urartu in the books of Kings and Isaiah of the Bible were translated as Armenia in the Septuagint. Some English language translations, including the King James Version, follow the Septuagint translation of Urartu as Armenia. The identification of the biblical mountains of Ararat with the Mount Ararat Turkish Agri Dagi is a modern identification based on post-biblical tradition. Some scholars have speculated that Ovid may have read the Pentateuch due to his use of the word Ararat in the Metamorphoses flood narrative, which describes humanity's suffering the consequences of angering the Roman god Jupiter. The name Ararat that was later used to describe lands located in the central region of the Kingdom of Armenia seems to have been of local usage as no known classical works use this word to refer to Armenia. The Ararat province of modern Armenia is named after Mount Ararat, which itself receives its name from the biblical mountains of Ararat or mountains of Urartu. Topic: Other names. Scholars such as Carl Ferdinand Friedrich Lehmann Haupt (1910) believed that the people of Urartu called themselves Chaldini after the god Haldi. Boris Piotrowski wrote that the Urartians first appear in history in the 13th century BC as a league of tribes or countries which did not yet constitute a unitary state. In the Assyrian annals the term Uruatri Urartu as a name for this league was superseded during a considerable period of years by the term Land of Neri. Shupriya Akkadian, Armani Subartu from the 3rd millennium BC was part of the Urartu confederation. 
Later, there is reference to a district in the area called Arme or Erm, which some scholars have linked to the name of Armenia. The biblical Her Ararat, Mountains of Ararat, is called Bet Kardu, House of Kardu or Kurdistan in Aramaic. It was called Ture Kardu, Mountains of Kardu, in the Targumin Kelos, and there are several references to Kardu in the Talmud. Topic: History. Topic: Origins. Assyrian inscriptions of Shalmaneser I c. 1274 BC first mention Uruartri as one of the states of Neri, a loose confederation of small kingdoms and tribal states in the Armenian highland in the 13th to 11th centuries BC which he conquered. Uruartri itself was in the region around Lake Van. The Neri states were repeatedly subjected to further attacks and invasions by the Assyrians, especially under Tukulti Ninurta I c. 1240 BC, Tiglath Pileser I c. 1100 BC, Ashur Belkala c. 1070 BC, Adad Nirari II c. 900 BC, Tukulti Ninurta II c. 890 BC, and Ashur Nasirpal II 883 BC. Urartu re-emerged in Assyrian inscriptions in the 9th century BC as a powerful northern rival of Assyria, which lay to the south in northern Mesopotamia and northeast Syria. The Neri states and tribes became a unified kingdom under King Aramu c. 860-843 BC, whose capital at Arzashkin was captured by the Assyrians under Shalmaneser III. Roughly contemporaries of the Uruartri, living just to the west along the southern shore of the Black Sea, were the Koskas known from Hittite sources. <laughs> Growth The Middle Assyrian Empire fell into a period of temporary stagnation for decades during the first half of the 8th century BC, which had aided Urartu's growth. Within a short time it became one of the largest and most powerful states in the Near East Serdori I c. 832-820 BC, son of King Aramu, successfully resisted the Assyrian attacks from the south, led by Shalmaneser III, consolidated the military power of the state and moved the capital to Tushpa modern Van, on the shore of Lake Van. His son, Ispuini c. 820-800 BC annexed the neighboring state of Musasir and made his son Sartori II viceroy. Musasir later became an important religious center of the Urartian kingdom. Ispuini was in turn attacked by Shamshi Adad V his successor Manua c. 800-785 BC also enlarged the kingdom greatly and left inscriptions over a wide area. Urartu reached the highest point of its military might under Menua's son Argishti I c. 785-760 BC, becoming one of the most powerful kingdoms of ancient Near East. Argishti I added more territories along the Iraq's river and Lake Seven, and frustrated Shalmaneser IV's campaigns against him. Argishti also founded several new cities, most notably Arabuni Fortress in 782 BC 6,600 captured slaves worked on the construction of the new city. At its height, the Urartu kingdom stretched north beyond the Araks River Greek, Araxis, and Lake Seven, encompassing present-day Armenia and even the southern part of present-day Georgia almost to the shores of the Black Sea, west to the sources of the Euphrates, east to present-day Tabriz, Lake Ermia, and beyond, and south to the sources of the Tigris. Tiglath Pileser III of Assyria conquered Urartu in the first year of his reign 745 BC. There the Assyrians found horsemen and horses, tamed as colts for riding, that were unequaled in the south, where they were harnessed to Assyrian war chariots. Decline and recuperation In 714 BC, the Urartu kingdom suffered heavily from Cimmerian raids and the campaigns of Sargon II. The main temple at Mushashir was sacked, and the Urartian king Rusa I was crushingly defeated by Sargon II at Lake Ermia. He subsequently committed suicide in shame. Rusa's son Argishti II BC restored Urartu's position against the Cimmerians, however, it was no longer a threat to Assyria, and peace was made with the new king of Assyria Sennacherib in 705 BC. 
This in turn helped Urartu enter a long period of development and prosperity, which continued through the reign of Argishti's son Rusa II 685 BC. After Rusa II, however, the Urartu grew weaker under constant attacks from Cimmerian and Scythian invaders. As a result, it became dependent on Assyria, as evidenced by Rusa II's son Sartari III 645 BC, referring to the Assyrian king Ashurbanipal as his father. <laughs> Fall According to Urartian epigraphy, Sartari III was followed by three kings. Aramina 635 to 620 BC, his son Rusa III 620 to 609 BC, and the latter's son Rusa IV 609 to 590 or 585 BC. Late during the 7th century BC, during or after Sartari III's reign, Urartu was invaded by Scythians and their allies, the Medes. In 612 BC, the Median king Cyaxers the Great together with Nabopolassar of Babylon and the Scythians conquered Assyria after it had been badly weakened by civil war. The Medes then took over the Urartian capital of Van towards 585 BC, effectively ending the sovereignty of Urartu. According to the Armenian tradition, the Medes helped the Armenians establish the Arantid dynasty. Many Urartian ruins of the period show evidence of destruction by fire. This would indicate two scenarios either Media subsequently conquered Urartu, bringing about its subsequent demise, or Urartu maintained its independence and power, going through a mere dynastic change, as a local Armenian dynasty later to be called the Arantids overthrew the ruling family with the help of the Median army. Ancient sources support the latter version. Xenophon, for example, states that Armenia, ruled by an Arantid king, was not conquered until the reign of Median king Astyages (585–550 BC), long after Median invasion of the late seventh century BC. Similarly, Strabo (first century BC, first century AD) wrote that. I n ancient times greater Armenia ruled the whole of Asia, after it broke up the empire of the Syrians, but later, in the time of Astyages, it was deprived of that great authority." Medieval Armenian chronicles corroborate the Greek and Hebrew sources. In particular, Movses Koronatsi writes that Armenian prince Parur Skeordi helped Syaxers and his allies conquer Assyria, for which Syaxers recognized him as the king of Armenia, while Media conquered Armenia only much later under Astyages. It is possible that the last Urartian king, Rusa IV, had connections to the future incoming Armenian Arantids dynasty. Urartu was destroyed in either 590 BC or 585 BC. By the late 6th century, Urartu had certainly been replaced by Armenia. <inaudible> Legacy The region formerly known as Urartu became the satrapy of Armenia under the Achaemenids, which later became an independent kingdom, the Kingdom of Armenia. Little is known of what happened to the region of Urartu under the foreign rule following its fall and the emergence of the satrapy of Armenia. According to Encyclopedia Iranica, during the Armenian rebellion against the Persian king Darius I in 521 BC 70 years after the fall of Urartu, the ethnonym Armenian and all other names attested, including personal and topographic names, were of Urartian origin proper names Araxa, Haldita, Dadarsis, toponyms Zuzia, Tigra, Ayama, suggesting that Urartian elements persisted within Armenia after its fall. The Beastan inscription, which was written in three languages, refers to the country as Armenia Armina and the people as Armenian Armenia in Old Persian, but as Urartu Arashtu and Urartian Arashta in Akkadian, suggesting that Urartu and Armenia were part of the same geopolitical entity. In the 6th century BC, Urartu was succeeded by a geopolitical entity referred to as the Satrapy of Armenia, ruled by the Arantid dynasty, who spoke the Armenian language, which is part of the Indo European language family. Since the Urartian language is not a part of the Indo-European language family, linguists and historians have attempted to explain the emergence of the Armenian language in the area. <laughs> Descendant communities 
According to historian M. Chahan, Urartian history is part of Armenian history, in the same sense that the history of the ancient Britons is part of English history, and that of the Gauls is part of French history. Armenians can legitimately claim, through Urartu, an historical continuity of some 4,000 years, their history is among those of the most ancient peoples in the world. The discovery of Urartu has also come to play a significant role in 19th to 21st century Armenian nationalism. Geography Urartu comprised an area of approximately 200,000 square miles square kilometers, extending from the Euphrates in the west to Lake Ermia in the east and from the Caucasus Mountains south towards the Zagros Mountains in northern Iraq. It was centered around Lake Van, which is located in present day eastern Anatolia. At its apogee, Urartu stretched from the borders of northern Mesopotamia to the southern Caucasus, including present day Turkey, Nakhchivan, Armenia, and southern Georgia up to the river Kura. Archaeological sites within its boundaries include Altantip, Toprakale, Patnos, and Haykabard. Urartu fortresses included Arabuni Fortress present-day Yerevan, Van Fortress, Argashtahinili, Anzof, Haykabard, and Baskel, as well as Teshebani, Karmir Blur, Red Mound, and others. <laughs> Discovery Inspired by the writings of the medieval Armenian historian Mavses Koronatsi who had described Urartian works in Van and attributed them to the legendary era the beautiful and Queen Samiramis, the French scholar Jean Saint-Martin suggested that his government send Friedrich Eduard Schultz, a German professor, to the Van area in 1827 on behalf of the French Oriental Society. Schultz discovered and copied numerous cuneiform inscriptions, partly in Assyrian and partly in a hitherto unknown language. Schultz also discovered the Kalishan steel, bearing an Assyrian Urartian bilingual inscription, located on the Kalishan Pass on the current Iraqi Iranian border. A summary account of his initial discoveries was published in 1828. Schultz and four of his servants were murdered by Kurds in 1829 near Baskel. His notes were later recovered and published in Paris in 1840. In 1828, the British Assyriologist Henry Creswick Rawlinson had attempted to copy the inscription on the Kalishan steel, but failed because of the ice on the steel's front side. The German scholar R. Roche made a similar attempt a few years later, but he and his party were attacked and killed. In the late 1840s Sir Austin Henry Layard examined and described the Urartian rock-cut tombs of Van Castle, including the Argishti chamber. From the 1870s, local residents began to plunder the Toprakale ruins, selling its artifacts to European collections. In the 1880s this site underwent a poorly executed excavation organized by Hormuzd Rassam on behalf of the British Museum. Almost nothing was properly documented. The first systematic collection of Urartian inscriptions, and thus the beginning of Urartology as a specialized field dates to the 1870s, with the campaign of Sir Archibald Henry Sace. The German engineer Karl Sester, discoverer of Mount Nemeru, collected more inscriptions in 1890 over 1. Waldemar Belk visited the area in 1891, discovering the Rusa steel. A further expedition planned for 1893 was prevented by Turkish-Armenian hostilities. Belk together with Lehmann Haupt visited the area again in 1898-9, excavating Toprakale. On this expedition, Belk reached the Kalishan steel, but he was attacked by Kurds and barely escaped with his life. Belk and Lehman Haupt reached the steel again in a second attempt, but were again prevented from copying the inscription by weather conditions. After another assault on Belk provoked the diplomatic intervention of Wilhelm II, Sultan Abdul Hamid II agreed to pay Belk a sum of 80,000 gold marks in reparation. During World War I, the Lake Van region briefly fell under Russian control. In 1916, the Russian scholars Nikolai Yakovlevich Mar and Iosif Abgarovich Orbeli, excavating at the Van Fortress, uncovered a four-faced steel carrying the annals of Sartori II. In 1939 Boris Borisovich Piotrovsky excavated Karmir Blur, discovering Tizbai, the city of the god of war, Tizba. Excavations by the American scholars Kursip and Silva Lake during 1938–40 were cut short by World War II, and most of their finds and field records were lost when a German submarine torpedoed their ship, the SS Athenia. 
Their surviving documents were published by Manfred Korfman in 1977. A new phase of excavations began after the war. Excavations were at first restricted to Soviet Armenia. The fortress of Karmir Blur, dating from the reign of Rusa II, was excavated by a team headed by Boris Piotrovsky, and for the first time the excavators of a Urartian site published their findings systematically. Beginning in 1956 Charles A. Burney identified and sketch surveyed many Urartian sites in the Lake Van area and, from 1959, a Turkish expedition under Tosin Ozguk excavated Altantip and Arif Erzin. In the late 1960s, Urartian sites in northwest Iran were excavated. In 1976, an Italian team led by Mirio Salvini finally reached the Kalishan Steel, accompanied by a heavy military escort. The Gulf War then closed these sites to archaeological research. Oktay Beli resumed excavation of Urartian sites on Turkish territory. In 1989, a Yanis, a 7th century BC fortress built by Rus's II of Urartu, was discovered 35 km north of Van. In spite of excavations, only a third to a half of the 300 known Urartian sites in Turkey, Iran, Iraq, and Armenia have been examined by archaeologists. Without protection, many sites have been plundered by local residents searching for treasure and other saleable antiquities. On 12 November 2017, it was announced that archaeologists in Turkey's eastern Van province had discovered the ruins of a 3,000-year-old Urartu castle during underwater excavations around Lake Van led by Van Yuzunku Yil University and the governorship of Turkey's eastern Bitlis province, and that revealed these underwater ruins are from the Iron Age Urartu civilization and are thought to date back to the 8th to 7th centuries BC. Topic. Economy and politics The economic structure of Urartu was similar to other states of the ancient world, especially Assyria. The state was heavily dependent on agriculture, which required centralized irrigation. These works were managed by kings, but implemented by free inhabitants and possibly slave labor provided by prisoners. Royal governors, influential people and, perhaps, free peoples had their own allotments. Individual territories within the state had to pay taxes the central government, grain, horses, bulls, etc. In peacetime, Urartu probably led an active trade with Assyria, providing cattle, horses, iron and wine. According to archaeological data, farming on the territory of Urartu developed from the Neolithic period, even in the 3rd millennium BC. In the Urartian age, agriculture was well developed and closely related to Assyrian methods on the selection of cultures and methods of processing. From cuneiform sources, it is known that in Urartu grew wheat, barley, sesame, millet, and emmer, and cultivated gardens and vineyards. Many regions of the Urartu state required artificial irrigation, which has successfully been organized by the rulers of Urartu in the heyday of the state. In several regions remain ancient irrigation canals, constructed by Urartu, mainly during the Argishti and Manua period, some of which are still used for irrigation. <laughs> Art and architecture There is a number of remains of sturdy stone architecture, as well as some mud brick, especially when it has been burnt, which helps survival. Stone remains are mainly fortresses and walls, with temples and mausolea, and many rock-cut tombs. The style, which developed regional variations, shows a distinct character, partly because of the greater use of stone compared to neighboring cultures. The typical temple was square, with stone's walls as thick as the open internal area but using mud brick for the higher part. These were placed at the highest point of a citadel and from surviving depictions were high, perhaps with gabled roofs. Their emphasis on verticality has been claimed as an influence of later Christian Armenian architecture. The art of Urartu is especially notable for fine lost wax bronze objects, weapons, figurines, vessels including grand cauldrons that were used for sacrifices, fittings for furniture, and helmets. There are also remains of ivory and bone carvings, frescoes, cylinder seals and of course pottery. In general their style is a somewhat less sophisticated blend of influences from neighboring cultures. Archaeology has produced relatively few examples of the jewelry and precious metals that the Assyrians boasted of carrying off in great quantities from Musasir in 714 BC. Religion 
With the expansion of Urartian territory, many of the gods worshipped by conquered peoples were incorporated into the Urartian pantheon, as a means of confirming the annexation of territories and promoting political stability. However, although the Urartians incorporated many deities into their pantheon, they appeared to be selective in their choices. Although many Urartian kings made conquests in the north, such as the Lake Seven region, many of those people's gods remain excluded. This was most likely the case because Urartians considered the people in the north to be barbaric, and disliked their deities as much as they did them. Good examples of incorporated deities however are the goddesses Bhagavarti and Salardi. On Mheri Dur, or Mertur the Gate of Mer, overlooking modern Van in present-day Turkey, an inscription lists a total of 79 deities, and what type of sacrificial offerings should be made to each. Goats, sheep, cattle, and other animals served as the sacrificial offerings. Urartians did not practice human sacrifice. The pantheon was headed by a triad made up of Haldi, the supreme god, Thespis Teshiba, god of thunder and storms, as well as sometimes war, and Shavini, a solar god. Their king was also the chief priest or envoy of Kaldi. Some temples to Kaldi were part of the royal palace complex, while others were independent structures. Some main gods and goddesses include Haldi, Thespis. Shivini, Arubani, Tushpueya, Bhagavarti, Salardi. Topic: <laughs> Language. Urartian language is the name retroactively applied by historians and linguists to the extinct language used in the cuneiform inscriptions of the Kingdom of Urartu. Other names used to refer to the language are Chaldean, also Haldian, or Neo Hurrian. The Urartian language is believed to be part of the Caucasian group. It is an ergative agglutinative language, which belongs to neither the Semitic nor the Indo European language families, but to the Hurro Urartian language family, which is most likely related to Northeast Caucasian languages. Examples of the Urartian language have survived in many inscriptions, written in the Assyrian cuneiform script, found throughout the area of the Kingdom of Urartu. Although, the bulk of the cuneiform inscriptions within Urartu were written in the Urartian language, a minority of them were also written in Akkadian the official language of Assyria. There are also claims of autochthonous Urartian hieroglyphs, but this remains uncertain. Unlike the cuneiform inscriptions, Urartian hieroglyphic have not been successfully deciphered. As a result, scholars disagree as to what language is used, or whether they even constitute writing at all. The Urartians originally would have used these locally developed hieroglyphs, but later adapted the Assyrian cuneiform script for most purposes. After the 8th century BC, the hieroglyphic script would have been restricted to religious and accounting purposes. The most widely accepted theory about the emergence of Indo-European in the region is that settlers related to Phrygians the Mushki and or the retroactively named Armeno Phrygians, who had already settled in the western parts of the region prior to the establishment of Urartu, had become the ruling elite under the Median Empire, followed by the Achaemenid Empire. Some have argued that the Urartian language wasn't spoken at all see language. The kingdom of Urartu, during its dominance, had united disparate tribes, each of which had its own culture and traditions. Thus, when the political structure was destroyed, little remained that could be identified as one unified Urartian culture. With the region reunified again under Armenia, the disparate peoples of the region mixed and became more homogeneous and a unified sense of identity developed. The Indo-European language became the predominant language, and eventually become known as Armenian. Some Urartians might have kept their former identity. According to Herodotus, the Alarodians believed to be Urartian remnants were part of the 18th satrapy of the Achaemenid Empire and formed a special contingent in the Grand Army of Xerxes I. The Urartians who were in the satrapy were then part of the amalgamation of the peoples, becoming part of the Armenian ethnogenesis. As the Armenian identity developed in the region, the memory of Urartu faded and disappeared. Parts of its history passed down as popular stories and were preserved in Armenia, as written by Movses Koronatsi in the form of garbled legends in his 5th century book History of Armenia, where he speaks of a first Armenian kingdom in Van which fought wars against the Assyrians. It is worth noting that no kingdom called Armenia existed during the time that Assyria did, but Urartu, which was also known as Van, did. 
Kuranatsi's stories of these wars with Assyria would help in the rediscovery of Urartu. The toponym Urartu did not disappear, however. The name of the province of Ararat in the center of the Kingdom of Armenia is believed to be its continuum. The Ararat province of modern Armenia is named after Mount Ararat, which itself receives its name from the biblical mountains of Ararat or mountains of Urartu. Topic: <laughs> Presence of the Armenian language. The presence of a population who spoke Proto-Armenian in Urartu prior to its demise is subject to speculation, but the existence of Urartian words in the Armenian language suggests early contact between the two languages and long periods of bilingualism. It is generally assumed that Proto-Armenian speakers entered Anatolia from around 1200 BC, three to four centuries before the emergence of the Kingdom of Urartu. The presence of Armenian speakers in the Armenian highlands prior to the formation of the Kingdom of Urartu is supported by a reference to the King of Uiram in an 11th century BCE list of lands conquered by the Assyrian king Tiglath Pileser I. Proto Armenian would have derived from Paleo Balkan languages like Armeno Phrygian and Mushki, and over the following centuries spread east to the Armenian highlands. An alternate theory suggests that Armenians were tribes indigenous to Urartu's northern periphery possibly as the Hayazans, Ituini, or Diaehi, all of whom are known only from references left by neighboring peoples such as Urartians and Assyrians. The Kingdom of Urartu united the disparate peoples of the highlands, which began a process of intermingling and amalgamation of the peoples, languages, and cultures within the highlands. This intermixing would ultimately culminate in the emergence of the Armenian nation as the direct successors and inheritors of the Urartian domain. While the Urartian language was used by the royal elite, the population they ruled may have been multilingual, and some of these peoples would have spoken an Indo-European language which would later be known as Armenian. In the later days of the Kingdom of Urartu, its population may have already been speaking the Armenian language, which, after the fall of Urartu, would rise to prominence and replace the Urartian language used by the former ruling elite. An addition to this theory, supported by the official historiography of Armenia and experts in Assyrian and Urartian studies such as Igor M. Diakonov, Georgi Melikashvili, Mikhail Nikolsky, Ivan Meschaninov, suggests that Urartian was solely the formal written language of the state, while its inhabitants, including the royal family, spoke Armenian. This theory primarily hinges on the fact that the Urartian language used in the cuneiform inscriptions were very repetitive and scant in vocabulary having as little as 350 to 400 roots. Furthermore, over 250 years of usage, it shows no development, which is taken to indicate that the language had ceased to be spoken before the time of the inscriptions or was used only for official purposes. According to the Encyclopedia of Indo-European Culture, the Armenians according to Diakonov, are then an amalgam of the Hurrian and Urartians, Luvians and the Proto-Armenian Mushki who carried their i.e. Indo-European language eastwards across Anatolia. After arriving in its historical territory, Proto-Armenian would appear to have undergone massive influence on part the languages it eventually replaced. Armenian phonology, for instance, appears to have been greatly affected by Urartian, which may suggest a long period of bilingualism. Another theory suggested by Tomas V. Gamkrelidze and Vyacheslav V. Ivanov in 1984 places the Proto-Indo-European homeland the location where Indo-European would have emerged from in the Armenian highlands see, Armenian hypothesis, which would entail the presence of Proto-Armenians in the area during the entire lifetime of the Urartian state. This Armenian hypothesis theory supports the theory that the Urartian language was not spoken, but simply written, and postulating the Armenian language as an in situ development of a third millennium BC Proto Indo European language. Ultimately, little is known of what was truly spoken in the geopolitical region until the creation of the Armenian alphabet in the 4th century AD. About one century after the fall of the Kingdom of Urartu, the 5th century BC Greek historian Xenophon claims that Armenian villagers spoke a language that sounded similar to Persian. In ancient Persian inscriptions, references to Armena Armenia indicate that Urartian was still used, or was in a transitional period into being replaced with the Armenian language. In fact, the ethnonym, Armena, 
Itself and all other names attested with reference to the rebellions against Darius in the satrapy of Armenia the proper names Araxa, Haldita, and Dadarsis, the toponyms Zuzia, Tigra, and Ayama, and the district name Atiara are not connected with Armenian linguistic and onomastic material attested later in native Armenian sources, nor are they Iranian, but seem related to Urartian. See also Economy of Urartu Chaldea Northeast Caucasian languages List of kings of Urartu <laughs>